Hi everybody, Teacher Marisa here and it's Wednesday. Happy early Earth Day. Yay, how are you doing out there? I think we're almost at 80 degrees today. It's pretty hot here in Portland. What's going on in your world? I think I actually talked to a student today and I can't remember where they were, but they were. it was snowing where they were. So I was like, oh wow, but let us know what's going on in your world. Don't forget to put in your tulips. And also, if you know of anyone who um, you think that would enjoy watching floral design, share this video out. We would really appreciate it. Okay, let's see. One full hour with me today in the studio. We have teacher Michelle. Hello. And you're on Facebook today? I'm on Facebook. On yes. Facebook. Okay. And then we have Parker. Say hi, Parker. Hi. Uh, taking uh, control over the technology. And then Susie is from afar and she's on YouTube. And then Caledonia is on Facebook as well. Today is jam packed. Okay. So I'm just going to jump right in. Um, we're going to talk about repurposing and reusing in honor of Earth Day, which is actually tomorrow, but we might as well celebrate it today. In addition to repurposing and reusing, I thought, why not also celebrate the four elements? So also, the four arrangements are going to represent water, air, earth, and the best one, fire. I'm a fire sign. So is Michelle. Oh, yeah. And so is Leanne. Can you imagine that? <laughs> All us fire signs in here. Oh, and also, I just found out Parker's a uh, fire it. sign, too. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> um, okay. So let's see. What else? Also, oh, if you are a first timer, let us know. We all want to welcome you in and say hello. So let's just jump in because I'm going to have to watch the time because if we're going to do four within the hour, each one Ooh, should be about 15 minutes. So let's see if we can do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I am going to start off with water. I figured that one was probably, probably going to be the easiest one. I started getting crazy with all the things that I wanted to use, reuse, repurpose. I tried to repurpose the pool noodles. It just wasn't working. So I had to ace that out. But repurposing, um, how many of you have so much, so much glassware? right, in your homes or in your studios or in your flower shops. Try to reuse those, get those out of there. Mother's Day is coming. So just try to get those out and reuse those and sell those. So we have this larger cylinder. And then of course, repurposing this sea glass. So again, all, pretty much everything that I started with is repurposed throughout the warehouse. I'm just looking through and saying, hmm, what else can I do with this? So um, here is just simple um, cla uh, clear glass with water and then the sea glass to kind of represent the ocean and the water and a little bit of lily grass just rolled inside just for interest. And then let's just get to designing. Okay, mechanically, right? Not really saying repurposing, but for the mechanic, why don't you just reuse your hands and use your hands as your mechanic? So we're just gonna design directly into our hands. So we're just gonna start really simple with a hand tie. Okay, let's see. Let's grab some of our materials out here and let's just start. Marisa? Yes. We have a newbie with us, a first timer. And her name is Vicky, and she's in New Zealand. Oh, Vicky in New Zealand. Hi. Isn't this the most beautiful variegated pittosporum you've ever seen in your life? It's just fabulous, so I had to take a stem from the class. All right, so I'm just going to start with a pittosporum just in the middle of my hand. And some eryngium. I feel like the eryngium really kind of resembles, well, sea holly too, right? We also know it as sea holly. So that also is representing water. So repurposing just my hand and just starting just to weave in. And trust me, I have some pretty cool other repurposed ideas later. But like I said, we're just gonna start really easy. Okay, so just kind of starting off here and I already have a little bit of a form. Let's see, what's next? Let's go and take 
some. We're gonna use some iris. Of course, blue iris, right? The blue and the water, I know. Let's take some of these beautiful dendrobiums. All I'm gonna do, they're already bunched together. I'm just gonna take them and just kind of nestle them right in, just like that. So there's no need to go uh, to place them in one at a time. So I really just wanted this kind of bunched and grouped look. There's one more piece of Orangium over here that's by itself. Let's just use it. So let's place this one over on this side. Okay. Okay, so then let's place some iris in the middle to add a little bit of contrast and height. So all I'm doing is just gonna go in and weave right through. So is there any tulips out there yet? Do we see any tulips? Oh my goodness. So they're still coming in. Still coming in, I'm sure. I'll talk really quickly because I got a lot. Scott, Wayne, Robin, Marjorie, Lori, Christy, Be Beatrice. Beatrice. <laughs> Gerald, Sue, Rosie, Drake, Tony, Jim. Jim's in a new town. Andrea, new Kim, town. Penny, Casey, Arthur, and there are still some popping in. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I got Anne, Heidi, Ginger, Roxanne, Mary, Tony, Anne Marie, Sarah, Janet, Debbie, and Lydia. Hi, everybody. So, Parker, you are are you on YouTube as I'm well? On YouTube. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was like, oh, I thought he's just like hanging out. <laughs> nice. Yeah. He's on YouTube as well. Cool. Okay, good. So I was like, oh, I was hoping to hear the other tulips on the YouTube side. So I'm wondering how many of you saw my story today on Instagram. I probably posted it around, I don't know, 1230 or 1. If any of you saw it, did you notice the little emojis at the very bottom, how I did earth, fire, air, and water? And did you notice that the little cloud was like blowing the uh, air on the fire? I don't know if you caught that, but just wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so see, just kind of adding some more color into the center to really kind of emphasize the middle portion. So really a lot of groupings here, right? All right, let's place this last iris. Ooh, let's see right over here. Or maybe we don't need this very last one. Maybe we'll try over here. If it doesn't work over here, then he might just have to not live with the rest of the family. Oh, and look at that. Okay. So a couple questions for you already. One, what's the foliage that's in the water currently? What's the foliage in the water? Oh, yes. In your vase. Okay. And then uh, Sue wants to know, how can I open iris if they're tight? Oh. I know you've gotten that I already cheated and opened them. Okay. So um, the foliage that's in here, I can only assume that you're asking about the variegated one. This one? In the water. Oh, this one. Other one. This one. That one. <laughs> this is lily grass. Lily grass is inside. And then let's see. With this one's, these ones are not tight, tight, but they were tighter. So on the iris, you can see there's these little folds. You can use your knife and kind of cut through. But if they're already kind of starting to show color, you can just tap them on your wrist too, and they open or just when you get your iris in, when you uh, are processing your flowers, put them in warmer water, like bath water. And then also put them in a warm spot, not like underneath a heater or don't put them outside in the sun. And I guarantee you the next day they'll start popping color. All right, so then look at these ranunculus. Look how fabulous these are. And I had these out and put these in warm water and they were starting to open. So let's see. Let's just bring that purple into the other. Oh, look at it. Let's pull that purple all the way through. I would say this is more like a plum, plum purple. Oh, look at it. And let's place maybe one in here. Just inside, just kind of, oh. Let's see. Kind of pull it down a little bit just to draw your eyes in a little bit. Ooh, this is really pretty. 
it looks really pretty on camera oh, too. Good. You can see the difference in the in the colors. Yay. Yeah, I mean, I, although like purple isn't, you know, your typical color, right, that you're going to use to represent water, but I just found that it just adds a lot of, just a little bit of contrast, right? So let's see, let's place, oh, look at this one. It's a little bit of pink, a pinker hue back there. Oh, let's see, I'm trying to find ones that have a little bit of kind of blousiness to them, a little bit of character. Any of the ones that look weird, right? <laughs> we all know Marisa likes the weird stuff. Don't oh, behave yourself, Leanne's on. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Leanne! I, I think we should all say it. I think you all know what I'm trying to say, right? Right? Ready? One, two, three. Aloha! <laughs> Everything is going great. Leanne is on a much needed vacation. So I'm glad to see that she's tuning in to see that we are still here. <laughs> Somebody had to be working. Someone had, yeah, someone had to do it. Yeah, we have teacher Carolyn out in the classroom today. Let's see, you know me, my hand always hurts. Um, today we did, I taught in the morning and she's still uh, teaching now. Um, today was designing to a price point. I find this is probably one of the most, well, I say this to every uh, uh, day um probably one of the most challenging because this is the one where we work backwards right so if a customer walks in and says hi i have 50 dollars," how do you work backwards and figure out how much money and materials do you have to use to fulfill that um order so we figure all of that out then you as a student there's no recipe for, for today. You as the student get to pick and choose how you would fill that order. So that one's quite fun. I think I'm gonna have this one poking up just a little bit. Ooh, this is hurting my hand. It's a big one. It's a big one. All right. I feel like just because this is probably the most beautiful gonus I've ever seen. I'm just gonna slide the, oh, I forgot to prep. So I'm just gonna remove, <laughs> remove all the foliage now. I forgot. And let's just place this, oh, look at, look, it's just gonna draw the line all the way to the other side. And let's just take a moment to relax the hand. I always, always, always tell the students, when you're doing a hand tie, try not to squeeze so hard. Well, I should take my own advice. So I, you just don't want it. You're scared, right? You're going to drop it. Okay. And then this Dusty Miller. I don't know. This kind of reminded me of like when the waves come and how it gets like kind of frothy, the white portion of the, the waves of the water. So I'm just going to place just some here. Ooh. <laughs> right around the collar. I'm just, excuse me, I'm going to make a collar. Just going around like this. So do we have anyone saying that there, there's snow in their area? Or do we have anyone saying, oh, it's 80 here as well? Or I haven't seen any snow, although I think over on YouTube, uh, Vicky put an emoji in of somebody on a snowboard. So maybe she's got some snow. Okay. Yeah, she said it's 15 Celsius. Ah. Oh, so Vicky, I think Vicky's in Canada. Okay. And then he lands in Mexico today. Oh. Yes. I know, right? Okay, so you can already see my hand cannot fit around this guy. So I think I need to stop. Okay, but I need to add one more thing. There's one more thing. We need to add a whole bunch of lily grass. Because what this is going to do is kind of represent like a waterfall from water. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now I just need to tie it off. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? I can do this. All right, so just taking some bind wire. Gonna try to go at least two times 
around to make sure it's really, really snug. I'm actually going to put this on the table because it's as big as you I'm are. Paying, it's painful. I always say this every time I make a hand, a hand tie. I always end up making it super jumbo and I'm like, this hurts really, really bad. I have to stop. Okay. All right. So then, again, to represent water, what better way than just to place it in water? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I don't, I think it might be too big, but let's just try. Let's just try. And you've all seen me do this a bunch of times, but this is just one of my most favorite techniques is just to place it in, balancing on the lip of the container. So I'm just cutting this down a little bit. And then I'm relying on you out there, as well as Parker and Michelle, so I can position this correctly. <laughs> because I won't be able to see. Is this too far forward? Can you see everything? Oh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, one wonky piece of lily grass there going backwards. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I tried playing with each and every one, and I was like, you know what? Can you see me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's water. Is it in the frame? You can see it all? Yeah. Okay. It's a little tall, but it, we can see it. Yeah, yeah there you go. Let's Set it back there and then just step to the side a little bit. And of course, Parker, you'll have pictures tomorrow, right? Yeah, we'll take pictures tomorrow. Oh, yeah. There you go. Super pretty. That probably looks a little bit better. If we just move a few things to the side. There you go. All right, I'm going to take this away. Yes, we're going to have uh, pictures tomorrow up so you can see everything that all right, so let's move this one to the side. And I'm really excited about this one. The next one. Because there is a little bit of repurposing in this one. Okay, so let's grab our materials. Uh, let's see. Okay. Again, looking through the warehouse, I can't say this enough, and a shout out to um, Heidi. If there was a Heidi out there from last week that had said um, during these times with you know um, materials and flowers and hard goods and things being a little bit harder to get, um, she had said um, this is really going to put the designer to the test and use things, you know, what, what else can you use? What, what can you repurpose with what you have, right? So literally, um, when I was thinking about what am I gonna do for air? What am I gonna do for air? I literally looked down and we have a huge box of sisal that we don't use. And this color, when I ripped it out of the bag and just kind of pulled it apart, I mean, does this not look like blowing air? I just, I don't, I just thought, I just love the shape. I'm not really gonna do much with it to really shape it out. I just love this free form. And this just looks like air to me, even though you really can't see air, but. Okay, so that's what's gonna represent air. Then, you have all seen me do the technique where I take the aspidistra and I um, split the leaves. Okay, so we've had this aspidistra here in the warehouse for a few weeks and you can see it's expired. It's a little crunchy, right? You can also do, well, you can't split salal, but anything that you have, um, if you have things that are starting to dry out like salal, uh, maybe some Italian rescus, maybe even some of, me, some of your branches, color enhance them, reuse them. I guarantee you if you had little sections in your shop with actually color enhanced older materials, I'm sure your customers will be like, oh, that's cool. What's that? Oh, I would like a little touch of gold or a little touch of white or even like turquoise or something. So this one, right, I already split it first um, here, but I went ahead, went ahead and split this one. And then, then I painted it. You can't paint and then split because the paint will chip off. So then this also kind of reminds me of air too especially if there's a little wind. 
Ooh, right? So that's, a, that's one way. I repurposed materials that were going to end up going into the trash. Okay, I just, you could probably sell this for like, what, $1.50 a stem, paid in, depending on, okay? Very thrifty. Very thrifty. Okay, so then, um, this is not really repurposing, but um, reuse, repurposing all the paint that we have. So in addition to the um, color that I used for the uh, Aspidistra, I went ahead and color enhanced this Plumosa. And Plumosa is so light and feathery that it kind of looks like air to me as well. All right, so let's get designing. So that's my repurposing for air. We are gonna use this really jumbo tall vase. Uh, this is gonna be too big to put up here and I always forget about the height restrictions. And I'm always, always like, I need to just make everything big. So we are gonna, I'm gonna have to design this back here, but I think it's gonna read better back here for you. All right, so in here, all inside is actually styrofoam and actually trash bags. And it's probably filled up to right about here because I'm not gonna fill this up with water. It's gonna weigh like a thousand pounds. So how am I gonna do this? That took me a minute to figure out. So what we're gonna do is take this, repurpose all of those random liners that you have in your back um, room there, your storeroom. Um, so I'm gonna reuse this liner, use a Kenzon to put inside and earth friendly, just like the hand tie. There's no foam, there's not even any floral netting. Um, so no foam here. I'm gonna put everything, I'm gonna insert everything into the Kenzon. So this is just gonna go right on top. Then just gonna tape over the top just to secure everything so nothing, you know, doesn't like whoop, like slip out. However, I don't think it would because that Kenzon weighs so much. Oh no, it didn't stick. It's probably my really sweaty hands. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if this works this time. Nope, it doesn't want to stick there either. And okay, let's see, I need some scissors. Here we go. Any questions out there? They are just talking amongst themselves. They're loving it. Um, Debbie says, I just threw away some old aspergistra. <laughs> Wish I had thought of that. Yeah. So also, too, keep in mind, okay, and then you said that was Debbie. Uh-huh. Okay. With your expired um, aspidistra or tea leaves, um, if, you are doing, if you are doing arrangements in foam, use that to cover your mechanics, right? So that you're going to use um, less material to cover your foam. It'll just disappear. All right. Now we're going to pour some water inside. Oh, I think I put a little too much in there. Oh, <laughs> oh well. It'll probably just spill over into, into the vase. Into the vase. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm really, I'm actually kind of nervous about this one because I've kind of played with it, but okay, let's see. So I'm just going to take, you're just going to love this alone. I'm just going to take this and just kind of nestle it kind of around just the top and it's just like blowing air. That's what this reads to me. I don't know if you think that, but I think so. All right, then let's see. Staying within the air theme. Come on, white hydrangeas look like clouds. So that's why I chose the white hydrangea. Let's see, my knife. All right, here we go. So let's place this first one. So I'm gonna go through here Kind of open this up, try to find that liner. Let's see, where are you? Going right down into the pins of the Kenzon. Let's put one right behind it to shadow it a little bit. So believe it or not, give me one second and I'll turn back around and explain here. So even though the pins are stabilizing, right, the hydrangeas inside, 
the sisal, I'm kind of, um, I'm weaving through the sisal too, so that also helps with stability as well. All right, let's see. I'm gonna add a little bit more Dusty Miller. Oh, I'm supposed to only have five more minutes for this one. You guys, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get all five in, but we'll see. Four, excuse me. Four, four. <laughs> five. Five, <laughs> four, no. All right, let's just do just a little bit there. Okay, repurposing the earth from outside. Look at this fabulous blooming dogwood that's right outside my apartment building. How pretty is this? Absolutely love it. Let's move some of these things off to the side so you all can see just a little bit more. I'm scared this is gonna fall over. Let's put this here. Those are pretty. Yeah, these are pretty. Ooh. What is that? Why is this wobbling? Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and give that one a cut. Let's see here. Oh. oh my gosh, this is so pretty. It's like, I just want just the arrangement with just the dogwood in it, but. All right, let's put in one other piece. These almost kind of, um, the flowers almost kind of look like Helleborus to me yes. a little bit. Let's maybe see if we can manipulate this one a little bit. Going right down again. I have to use my fingers to get into the Oops, this one didn't get into the Kenzot. There we go. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, good. All right. So there's that. Then let's use these ones, the Aspidistra, the feathered Aspidistra. Looking to see which one would look better in the front. Let's see, put this one in the back. Can you see? You probably can't see the bottom, huh? Yeah, here. Oh, you can. Oh, good. So here's a question. Uh huh. How long does dogwood last as a cut? Yes. I know we did a little test. We did. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, okay, so I cut these two days ago, and they were still fine. So so far, I know cut two days. <laughs> so at least it's better than no days. Sometimes I cut things right, and, and then you walk back in an hour, and it's, it's dead. So I was really surprised. I, wasn't, I didn't think that they would last that long, but well, that one's not working. Let's see. Maybe we can go underneath. Let's see. Christy says, every time I work with white hydrangeas, my daughters always shout, fluffy clouds. Yes. See? <laughs> It, it's like air. Yes, 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 yes. Fluffy clouds. All right. Okay. Esther said her dog doesn't bloom. Oh, uh, I wonder if it's a different variety, maybe. Hmm. Okay. And then we have some of oh, this stuff. Look at this plumosa. And notice there really isn't much in here. It's the perceived value, the very tall base. You know what? We may not even need this, but let's just see. The very tall vase, um, the hydrangeas are, are big in volume, right? And then we have these beautiful showy branches. So let's try to go right down in here. That may not really do very much, but just a little bit of texture. I kind of want to see what this looks like with some just kind of coming over the top. Yeah, of the split aspidistra there. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I like this one. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's just add in just a few. Ooh, that, that stem's way too big. I don't know the variety of this spray rose, but it's so pretty. They're just these light lavender, but these were thorny, like they hurt really 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 bad definitely had to prep these ones first like they have the little little tiny little thorns all the way up here they're not very friendly <laughs> all right so let's just add 
Watch what this is going to do. This is going to pull that purple color or lavender all the way up. So I'm just going to insert just right in. You can feel it just catch into the Kenzan. So just a few touches here. Ouch. Let's see. Let's go maybe a little higher here. So here's a question for you. Demi wants to know on the leaves, the aspidistra, is it okay to spray paint them when they're fresh as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to do the splitting technique though, you have to um, split first, then paint. Because again, if you um, split while they're painted, the paint will crack. But you can, if you're not going to do the splitting, you can just paint them just as is. Um, a little tip too, when you're um, color enhancing, you want to, let's see, let's see. You want to make sure your, um, your materials are dry. So just make a, just uh, wipe it down with a little towel because the um, paint uh, doesn't stick. Right. Is there a type of paint that works best for color enhancing? Yes, we use Design Master. We like Design Master. All right, I'm just leaving it. I, I don't like a lot of materials in my designs. I think this is just fine. I think it's actually quite, um, it's very simple but very impactful. So we have just, there's line all over this thing, right? Your eyes just move all over the place. Um, so this is my air interpretation. I hope you like it. Getting lots of love, Yay. lots of hearts. Yay. Somebody said you need a chair so you can stand up a little taller. I know. All right, so I'm gonna try and move this, okay? So we'll see how, how uh, stabilized my insertions really are. Okay, let's see, let me just make some room here. We're doing okay on time. Actually, I wonder, maybe we can just leave that right here. Let's just do that. Okay, so this next one is, okay, we have about a little, 30 minutes. This next one, we're gonna do Earth now. Okay, you ready for this one? Do I see, do I hear a yes yet? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> we have yeses. <laughs> Love it's yeses. Love it's thumbs ups. Okay. So how many times do you get your spider bums in and they have the little net guy on it, right? Let's repurpose this. Now this, this kind of, or not kind of, the inspiration behind this idea was the kokidama. Kokidama is a Japanese planting style that basically is a ball of soil covered in moss and you and you put the plant inside. So that's kind of how um, I got this idea from. Also, um, a couple weeks ago when Leanne was talking about like the old school mechanics with the moss, right? I just kind of wanted to try that. So I'm gonna take my little hairnet, have some already saturated moss, not like super saturated, but it's still moist. I'm just gonna go around it and then just make a little ball. And then I'm just gonna use bind wire. This is very similar technique also that we do in advanced when we make our petaled orbs, right? So I just keep going around and around and around. You don't have to use the netting, right? However, it just kind of um, keeps everything in place and you can kind of mold it, okay? So that's how I created these, I'm gonna bring it out right now. Let's move this out of the way. This one's gonna be interesting, designing this one backwards. <laughs> yeah, this, you're this one's gonna be interesting. Repurposing the branch from the Easter live stream that I did a few weeks ago. Do you, how many of you remember this branch? And I, and I hung an Easter basket on this one. So this one's gonna represent Earth. So I made a whole bunch of these little guys and hung them. 
And then what I did is I took my, I took actually my knife and some scissors and I just poked holes here. And then let's see, I just kind of sh shoved my finger in there just to kind of get some, an insertion area for all my little blooms. So there is some moisture. Um, this would definitely be something you'd more want to do for event work. It doesn't provide a lot, a lot of water, but it still does provide a little bit of a water source. And this is how they used to do it back in the day, right? So let's play with it. Let's see. Um, let's use. Let's see. We had a question on the fluffy blush colored flowers on the left. Your right. These? Yes. Oh, just give me like two minutes and I'm going to, oops, too short. I'm going to put those in, in here. I got you. All right, so look. In those little tiny holes, look at how cute. You can just put these little tiny mini cymbidiums in here. This one was too small. That one's not going to reach. So you don't have to use the whole entire stem, right? You can just take some off. Let's see, where are you? Grouping just a couple here, down here. You gotta make sure they, their throats kind of, there we go. You gotta maintain the same rhythm Make sure the throats go in all the same direction. And then let's actually place one way over here. Do that. All right, so these wonderful white, peachy-ish, blushy blooms are called butterfly ranunculus. When doing arrangements like this as well, um, like I said, it does provide a little bit of a water source. Um, you want to choose flowers or blooms that will last well with a little bit of hydration. So orchids definitely do well with that, believe it or not. So do these. So do these butterfly ranunculus. All right, so let's see. Let's try. Let's see, I got like five minutes, a little over five minutes. Let's try to go over here. And I have no idea how this is looking on your side, okay? So I'm kind of freestyling this one. It's looking good. <laughs> All right, let's take this one big bloom. Rose says she recognizes the branch. Oh, good. <laughs> Got to repurpose these branches. I also should have showed you um, something else that we've done with the um, little hair nets off the um, uh, spider mums. Is we've actually um, wrapped them around little tiny vases before just to give them texture. It's actually kind of fun. So as I'm looking through all of these butterfly ranunculus, I'm trying to find ones that have little bits of bend to them. Let's see, where should we put you? I think, let's see. Faye wondered if you could put a water tube inside the moss ball for longer life. You totally could put a water tube and thank you for mentioning that because I totally thought of that too, right? But <laughs> uh, I just wanted to actually design directly in here, but yeah, absolutely. That would be a great And if they came technique. off your orchids, yep. you'd be repurposing them. And if they can't, oh, see? Because your orchids come with the water tubes, and you can just re repurpose the water tubes. That's why Michelle gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why Michelle watched the Tulip Tuesday with Leanne and caring for your orchids this week. Reminded me, we have tubes. All right, so just a few, it's not, you know, it's not a lot, right? But, you know, your eyes just move around. It, you know, it really kind of, you know, tells a little story here. Um, not, again, not using too many materials. It's kind of jumping forward a little bit. Let's see, what else can we add in here? I don't, I think this is gonna be too much, but let's just see if this works, okay? 
Um, I kind of wasn't gonna go with the sword fern because it doesn't actually last very well out of water. However, when it starts to get dry, it kind of curls and it looks kind of cool. So I was like, you know what? Let's just, let's just put it in there and we'll see how it looks tomorrow. If it doesn't look pretty, then we'll just take it out. So let's see, I can't see. So I'm not sure if that does anything on your end. What do you think? How does that look on camera? Uh, I think it looks okay. Oh, ooh, okay. Okay's not well, good enough. <laughs> let's see. Let's do maybe another little one right here underneath that orchid there. Cute. There you go. Yep. Okay. Then let's try. You have to find the right pieces. Let's. I know this breaks my heart. I'm like using just the little tips here. Let's see if this pulls the line all the way to here. I don't know if this is too, this is not really a word, repeaty. Is it too like, you know? No, it looks okay. good. I mean, designing backwards, this is hard. I really don't, I'm just, you know, this is hard. <laughs> And then let's just, let's just see, and I'm going to let you all decide as well, because this is actually going to change the rhythm. It's going to, it's going to increase the line, but I'm going to make the line go another way here. Leanne says, I want this one at my house upon my return. All right. I just need the key code <laughs> and key code. I can just jump right in and it'll be there when you get home. <laughs> all right. I think literally this is all it needs. I don't, again, like to add a lot of um, materials. It's the artistry part, the line, the space, the emphasis, all of it's there, all of the elements and principles. Okay, last one. Wow. I have like 20 minutes. Okay, so let's move this one and the next one's fire. Really excited about this one. I gotta drag this one out because we have 20 minutes. I went way too fast. <laughs> okay, so let's move this one. Oh, look at it, it kind of like moves. The, how cool, oh. Suspended. <gasps> Suspended. Yes. And what if we like, oh, you know what, let's just play. We have time. What if we did, what if, with that, I don't know if that would it'd be, probably be too tall. Let's just try. What if, if Sharon LaFay's out there, what if, I say that all the time in class. Let's see if this will balance. Ooh. I don't know if it will. Ooh. Well, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna. But let's just pretend. But like, how cool would that be like elevated on something? Or suspended, for sure. Yeah, suspended would be amazing. We're getting lots of suspend, suspend. Peter says it looks like the snitch from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> You're all totally probably gonna judge me right now, but I've like seen one Harry Potter and it was a long, long time ago and I really don't know all the lingo for the Harry Potter. <laughs> okay. So I'm sure you all can guess. Last one is fire and yes, can't go wrong with this awesome orange vase. I'm going to have to, again, yes, design back here because I'm going to go too tall. So I think I'm going to actually have to move this one out of the way. Okay. How many of you remember Christmas with me this year? And I used the snowy branches. How many of you remember the snowy branches? I need some answers before I show you my, I'm so excited to show you this. <laughs> you guys let me know if anyone remembers when I used the snowy branches. I'm Come watching. on, hurry because I wanna get started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well hopefully, hopefully um, so one of you remembered. Well, Anne Marie remembers. Okay, good. Anne Marie, right yep. on. Okay. So does Ginger. Okay, good. Robin does. Okay, they're just slow. <laughs> okay, so how many how how many 
holiday materials do you have like snowy branches from Christmas time or anything like that, right? So I'm thinking, do you guys know where I'm going with this, right? So I'm thinking like, how am I gonna make flames? And I looked again down the aisle, I'm like the snowy branches. These don't have to be just used for Christmas time. So why don't we drum roll make fire <laughs> out of our snowy branches? Uh, so I spray paint, or excuse me, I color enhance these. I just used red and yellow because the red and the yellow make the secondary color of the orange in the middle, which really, look, this is actually analogous. How cool is that? All right, so I'm gonna have to put this back here. However, I think this is still gonna read better. Repurposing and reusing Curly Willow. Okay, did you notice today everything was foam free? No foam, even no floral netting. You're welcome, Earth Day. <laughs> okay, um, to do this technique though, your curly willow has to be flexible. It can't be crunchy. Um, so all I'm gonna do is just take a whole bunch of this and just kind of wad it up. And just kind of place it down inside, just like that. And that's gonna be my grid, uh, just like how you would do uh, use uh, floral netting inside, right? It's the same thing. Um, I actually like some of it kind of poking out, um, kind of give it a little bit of movement. Okay, so any comments on my fire? Oh yeah, lots of them. Fire and ice, looks like coral. It does look like coral, but I know. But this is the closest I could get to fire. I was actually trying to find my, remember my bird of paradise leaves that I did? Oh, I think I used to bring those out actually a couple times for Halloween. I thought I saved them, I couldn't find them. But Bird of Paradise leaves, if you ever want to represent flames, dried Bird of Paradise leaves does it like amazing. I actually did a Hunger Games um, photo shoot with those to try to make fire and it was really cool. All right, so let's just place these in. Make sure you don't get the snowy stuff in water because it gets really goopy. Let's see, let's go over here can you all see is mm -hmm. this yep. reading looks reading good one? okay and then i'm gonna leave this one out for now okay let's use so i did this on purpose because we miss you so much leanne okay so but we're gonna use some ginger <laughs> She's probably like, they're everywhere outside. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Gonna go ahead and give this a cut. And then with ginger, I always kind of take off this little piece here just to give myself some extra room. Then just gonna go in and kind of repeat the line of the flames on the left side. putting the ginger up to it just to see where I need to cut. Okay. About 11 minutes, we're good. Whoops, that swung around. Don't worry, we're gonna add more things. Okay. Then, even though it's chocolate, this still kind of looks real flamey to me. So let's put some of this a gonus in. Let's see. Let's place some. Going on. Whoops! Swung around. It's fine. It's fine. We'll fix it. And then let's draw the line all the way through and place a little bit on the other side. should we put in here? Let's put a few of these, like, come on, like these do, these look like fire, right? We need a longer piece on this side. The balance is looking a little off. Can you see that on the left side? Needs to be a little bit heavier to balance out the, excuse me, 
the right side needs to balance out with the, with the left side. So let's put another piece of gonus there. There we go. All right. Okay. Then let's place a couple, few pin cushions right down in the center here for our focal point. No questions? Everybody's so... They're just mesmerized by the flames, just like mobs were drawn to it. <laughs> All right, so the little issue here is we need something to break the line because the con there's we need more contrast here because the eye just sees, you probably just see like just orange, right? Um, so even though this isn't very flamey, but you know what? We will make it work. So... What we're going to do is just lift these up a little bit. Now, oh, come on, let's get in there. Let's just look at this. All right, then we're going to pull these out a little bit, and that'll just brighten up that area a little bit more. Then, if we also, by doing this too, this is also strengthening our weave a little bit for our ginger to not you know, swing around. And then to unify this all the way through, let's put some to the back. You may not see it too much, but it does draw your eye from front to back. Okay. I'm not even going to say anything. How fabulous are these? I tried to get a name. I looked at the invoice. They are called Anthurium Assorted. Um, so I don't know the name or the color. Um, between uh, teacher Michelle and I, we were saying like mauve. And as I was walking out, I was like, oh, it could be a rose, a dusty rose Anthurium. But they look like fake. Fabulous. All right, so where are these going to go? Oh, now this one wants to swing around. Let's see. You stay right there. All right, let's see. So this one's smaller. Oh my gosh, you guys, I don't even know if I can use these in here. I don't want to cut. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Getting lots of love. Love those. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Yes. I want. Yeah. I might have to take one home. So I am actually just massaging these a little bit um, to kind of get them to bend the way that I want. You can do this with the other, let's see, anthuriums I do this with and calla lilies. Those are probably the only. I mean, lily grass, things that can actually bend. You can't do it to a tulip because the tulip will, will snap. Um, let's see. Let's just place this in and see how it, how it looks. So let's just, yeah, let's just have it pop out a little bit just to add a little bit of depth. And then let's, let's see if this works. If we place this one. Mm, no, that looks kind of funny. That looks, that looks disconnected. So let's just leave that one by itself because how fiery are these? We may have to take out the anthurium. I don't know because this may not all work together. So we're just going to have to play together, okay, and figure this out. I think these are like a parrot tulip, Michelle. Right? Parrot mm -hmm. tulip? Or fringed. Fringed. Fringed mm -hmm. tulip. Fringe, not Frenched. Fringe tulip. All right. Oh, look. So let's place some tulip. Oh. Okay. 
Let's place some of these two. And this is going to be interesting tomorrow, right? When we take the pictures, because these tubes are probably not going to be going this direction. So that will make this arrangement even cooler, more interesting. Let's see if we have anything that can go straight up. Look at even the leaves look like flames but I have to take them off because they don't fit. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Oh yes, 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 yes. You guys putting your hearts in because... <laughs> they are. Good. So you can see, oh, you're, these guys are still swinging around a little bit. So I just need to um, add just a few more pieces of material because the ginger is so uh, top heavy and needs just a little bit more support. So let's see, oh, look at this one. Look how cool, we'll save that for maybe its own little bud vase. All right, so let's actually see what happens if we put some over on this side. Let's do another one. Third one. We need a third one on the right side. And I don't know why I left this out. This is also considered flame ginger, too. Mm. So. There you go. Hello. Perfect. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I can't believe I left that out. <laughs> Getting lots of hearts in the chat. It is unbelievably gorgeous on camera. Oh, good. Dan can have the Kokodama. I'll take that one. Uh-oh. It broke it. I feel like we got one more. Yeah, doing when you're doing linear, right, the, the lines have to be very, very precise. You don't want anything crossing. Oh, and then also just trying to find a spot here. And you still want to turn. Mister. All right, so let's actually adjust a little bit. Like that. Go just a little higher, a little bit higher. Marisa, did you reflex those tulips at all, or is that them just that's, doing their tulip thing? That's just how they come. Nope, I did not. Okay. So they're like they're almost kind of like following the flame of the winter branch, which is now a fiery branch. <laughs> so let's I'm just trying to get these. I don't even know why I'm fussy with them because tomorrow they're gonna do whatever they want. Um, let's just decide. The only reason why I want to put this in is because the the ginger is still swinging around a little bit. This may help stabilize. So I don't know if this is gonna to be too much. You tell me if you like it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so that one is done. Um, I would bring out all of them, but they're not gonna fit up here, okay? Okay, I did it. We did four arrangements in one hour. Water, earth, air, and fire. I hope there was something here that inspired you, right? Like you may not, use um, anything exactly, but it may inspire you to think like, oh, you know, I don't have sisal, but I have all this, I don't know, fabric or material that I have that I can try and reuse, right? Um, you may have Kinzons, you may have, you know, I'm sure, I can't remember who was it, Debbie earlier, maybe out in the trash picking out her expedition going, oh my gosh, yes. I need to use those, right? Um, maybe different techniques with moss, um, anything, you know, just really challenge yourself. Maybe just one thing just to try. Um, I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you get out there and do something creative and do something you love. Bye everybody.